Hey everyone, it's Brooke. Welcome back to my channel. I'm going to do the second part of my January wrap up. Uh, most of these books I have talked about sort of in either their own video or like a matchup to, to book review video. So I'm, I, I can think I can get through this pretty quickly and just direct you to those videos if you want to know more. So uh, I'll start with Grey Sister by Mark Lawrence. I listened to this in audio. This is the follow up to Red Sister. Uh, and even though I didn't love Red Sister, I really loved this. I loved the audio narration. I thought this was such a cohesive, uh, better written, better structured. Just um, every problem I had with Red Sister I felt like was fixed in Grey Sister. And so I'm very excited to read Holy Sister when it comes out in April. Uh, I'll be listening to it on audio because Heather O'Neill... I think I'm going to say this in every video that I make forever. She's great. Uh, but I did do a video uh, going more into detail about what I liked about Grey Sister. So you can check that out on my channel. In that video, I talked about another book I read and another second book in a series. And that was The Girl in the Tower by Catherine Arden. Um, so... Yeah, I think because I read Grey Sister and The Girl in the Tower so back to back, I really ended up comparing them as second books in a series and thinking a lot about second books in the series and what you kind of want from them. And this one just felt a little bit flat for me. It wasn't necessarily a bad book. They were just, I spent a lot of time when I was reading it being like, yes, this is enjoyable, but there's some problems and there's some things I'm not as um, a fan of and it lost some of the magic of the Bear and the Nightingale in my personal opinion but again you can check out the video with Grey Sister Girl in the Tower and I will go more into detail about the things I liked and did not like there. Uh, my favorite book of the month was The Dreamers by Karen Thompson Walker. I loved this so much uh, and I sort of knew I would. It's the kind of literary fiction with like the genre bent that I think is just my total jam. It's just the thing that I want when I'm reading um, literary fiction these days. I did a video about this. I don't think it's up yet. It will be up soon. I talk at length about the marvelousness of Karen Thompson Walker and the dreamers and the themes and what I loved and so check that video out uh, but this gets like five stars this is this is a five star read for me this is the only five star read I had this month uh, I could not recommend it more but I do think it is for a very specific reader who doesn't necessarily need to know you know the book asks a lot of questions and kind of I think leaves a lot to you it's very dreamy. It's got a sort of a, a kind of a filter between you and the characters. It leaves you a little bit of a distance in a way that I really like. So, you know, but in general, this is great. In the video with the dreamers, I also talk about a YA historical fantasy novel that I feel like tonally is very similar to the dreamers. Just in that sort of sleepy, dreamy, um, you know, quality. Uh, and so that is The Cold is in Her Bones by Peter Nell Van Arsdale. So this, this is just, it's like a historical fantasy. So it's set sort of feels like the 1800s, but it's, I don't know that there's, it could be even earlier. It could be like the 1600s. This could be almost Maybe there is a time, but I don't think there's a time period. It, it, it's, it's very isolated. It's very on a farm. I feel like The Bear and the Nightingale, the setting is very similar to this setting, if that makes sense. Uh, but this is a Medusa reimagining. Uh, and it. I thought this was weird in the best ways, but still told a cohesive, concrete story. And I really enjoyed it. Um, so again, check out the other video for more details. But if you're looking for a good readathon book that has some great feminist qualities, you know what I really liked the most about this though is that this book, like, talks about sort of 
toxic feminism, you know, the sort of internalized misogyny that we that, that we sort of can perpetuate among each other as like girls and women I really liked it and then the, the the last two books I have not filmed a separate more detailed video about so we'll go into a little more detail here the first is so lucky by Nicola Griffith this is literary fiction this is the second book I'm reading off of the tournament of books short list. Uh, it's very short. It's it's basically a one sitting read. I listened to this in audio. I listened to a lot of these in audio, just being honest. It's a great audio. I recommend the audio experience. This is about a woman, uh, Mara. She's the head of like a multi-million dollar AIDS nonprofit. Uh, she's the executive director until she is diagnosed with MS and they fire her um, due to that diagnosis. And, and that, as this is going on, she's also getting divorced from her wife of 14 years. So it's basically a book about a woman whose life is just sort of completely sort of changing drastically, not always in positive ways, and her having to deal with that and her anger. Um, this reads a lot like a memoir. But you know it's not a memoir at a certain at a certain moments. But you can feel how much Nicola Griffith has written her own story into this. It's not the same. This is not a memoir. This is fiction. But Nicola Griffith is. This is Own Voices queer rep. Um, this is Own Voices MS rep. Um, so there are things, and there are a couple of life events that happen here that happens to Nicola as well. So I think this is just her sort of fictional fictionalizing. A character that she can relate to a lot um, and what I think is most striking about this is just the way that she honestly gets to the character Mara gets to be angry about what's happening to her um, and I really appreciated that uh, for the most part though this was the three-star read for me so it was very sort of middle of the road um, I'm not unhappy to have read it it's just like it didn't it didn't do a lot for me. I enjoyed reading, not enjoyed the wrong word, but you know, like it was very interesting to read more about MS from someone who has MS perspective. My best friend growing up, her mom had MS, and so it was something that I that I was very aware of, but I didn't really get to talk. To, I didn't talk to her much about like her life and her experiences. So this was kind of nice to be able to put some of that in the context. Um, so yeah, you know, it's a very angry little short book, very much in the head of one woman going through some shit and, uh, angry women. I'm like, I'm always kind of there for, uh, so yeah, check this out. If you think that sounds interesting. And then the last thing I finished on the last day of January is the Gilded Wolves by Roshni Chokshi. So this is sort of one of the big YA releases of 2019. This is about, this is a heist novel. It's set in 19, or 19, 1889 Paris and uh, the Belle Epic era. Um, this is about sort of a ragtag group of misfits coming together to like figure out sort of like Dan Brown-esque Indiana Jones puzzles. Uh, to pull off this sort of Six of Crows-esque heist. Um, so it's hard to read this and not compare it to other things. Uh, um, mm. That's kind of true of a lot of books, though. I don't know that that makes this particularly worse in any way. Um, I think my problem with reading this is that I just read Six of Crows last month or in December, so, and I read Crooked Kingdom in January, and so I feel like that was that was too close like there needed to be some distance because I was constantly comparing this to those stories and that's not fair um it's not like Six of Crows and Crooked Kingdom invented the heist story you know what I mean like I didn't read Six of Crows and constantly compare it to like an Oceans movie so I just think I think I should have read this at a different time um I liked certain aspects of this, particularly the end. I liked the drama of the ending. I know some people didn't, but like 
Um, it was a book that, for the most part, I was like, oh, I don't need to read the second one in this series. This will be one that I can be one and done with and, and not have to follow it. And then the ending was like, fuck you, Brooke. You're going to read the second book. So I'm going to read the second book. God damn it. Um, but I don't... This, for me, was about a three-star middle-of-the-road young adult novel. Um, I think that... Heist novels are difficult. Heist stories in general are very difficult. And I think some of the details in this got um, muddled. And so I didn't always know what was going on. I felt confused at times. And listen, I don't want to be confused <laughs> when I'm reading a book that I'm reading for funsies. Um, and I read a lot of reviews where a lot of people were confused. So I don't necessarily think this was always plotted super well. I also think... It's shy of, it's 380 pages, so it's shy of 400 pages, and I, there's like multiple heists in this. I feel like maybe one would have been enough, and then you would have been able to concentrate on those details and like make it come off a little bit better instead of trying to cram so much that I just feel like you some, some important detail was left out. I, a lot of people describe this as like being like super detailed and like, um, explaining a whole lot to you, but still feeling vague. I, I totally agree with that criticism. Um, so, yeah, that's just how I felt about it, unfortunately. But like I said, the ending. I thought there were some really great things done at the end. And I, I feel like, hopefully, the second book will improve. And since I'm a sucker, uh, and I'll be reading the second book now, that's what I can hope for. I think it's going to take place in Russia. That's fun. Um, I will say, uh, this has great um, diversity. Great representation in its cast of characters. And that needs to be noted and said. Um, you know, different racial identity, sex sexual identity, identities. Um, I think there's even some, some gender norms that are being, you know, pushed at. Uh, there's some neurodiversity, so it's got, it's got some goodness in that area, but just some muddled plotting. <sighs> so that's it. That's my January done. I read 14 books total. I've already finished something in February. I think I'm reading too much and I need to slow down and savor things more. So I'm taking my time with King of Scars, which is what I'm reading right now, and Kingdom of Copper, which is also what I'm reading right now, plus two audiobooks. I've become that person. Anyway, I will talk to you guys next video.